To bean or not to bean? That's not the question. The question is, will it tofu? In this video, we're going to attempt my personal favorite bean, the kidney bean. America's favorite bean, the pinto bean, plus another American favorite, black beans, also known as black turtle beans, and these giants, broad fava beans, because one of their cousins have already proven their worth. Will these work just as well? Let's find out, my friends, on this latest installment of Will It Tofu, the series where we take the traditional method of making tofu and applying it to non-traditional ingredients here on Mary's Test Kitchen. First up on the docket, black beans. And the first step, as nearly always, is soaking the dry raw beans overnight so they plump up and become easy to blend. After draining the soaking water and rinsing them off, half the beans go into my high-speed blender along with about double their current volume of water for about 30 seconds. Then the puree goes into a fine, strong nut milk bag to strain. Two minutes into the video and Houston, we have a problem. This puree is slimy. It's thick. Same kind of thing you'd encounter when draining a can of cooked beans. So I thought to myself, work smarter, not harder. Turns out, not such a smart idea. After several hours, this is all we have. I am blaming the soluble fiber in black beans for making the liquid so thick it's nearly impossible to get it all through the nut milk bag. Regardless of which part is to blame, the black bean pulp could not be squeezed dry, at least with anything I had at my disposal. I did try again with the other half of the beans with less blending time and more water, but honestly, same same. So, to preserve my enthusiasm for the rest of this series, I cut my losses and moved on with the milk that we did get. On to the cooking stage. Then in with our reliable coagulant mixture of calcium sulfate and lukewarm water. Then I covered and waited, just like with previous attempts. 15 minutes later, we have nothing. Oh. <laughs> bean soup, slimy bean soup. So now we know, can black bean tofu? The answer is no. I gotta admit, I had strong doubts about this from the get. But for now, the question remains for our next three contenders. Ready for success? I am, which is why I picked broad fava beans as our next contestant. Regular fava beans worked so well before, so why wouldn't this work? Please give this video a thumbs up and let's find out together. With 250 grams of dried broad fava beans. As always, we soak them overnight. Then after draining and rinsing and draining once more, look at how much they grew. into the blender with water, testing the limits of this blender jar, and blend for 30 seconds. Then we strain. This is much easier than the black bean puree, and frankly, this gets me a little excited. Are you? The brown color of this milk is quite pretty and I'm looking forward to turning it into tofu, but first, the settling step. That just means letting this sit and hopefully the starch will sink to the bottom. As we know from previous experience, starch interferes with the curd sticking together and making a mushy tofu rather than bouncy. While we wait, let's add more beans to the pipeline. First up, my favorite, kidney beans. And in goes plenty of water so they can absorb as much as they like. Then our pinto beans.
both jars go into the fridge overnight. The next day, we're back with the broad fava bean milk. Unfortunately, I can't see much of a starch layer. Not like the last time with our regular fava beans. But I know there's starch in this milk because of the nutritional information. I wonder why the starch hasn't fallen to the bottom. Can't wonder long though because we have a schedule to keep. Moving on to the cooking stage. Starch gels up when cooked, so I'm going to cook this on a lower heat at first. See if that starch will go ahead and clump together. Yep, starch. I can feel it. So I let this cook over medium-low heat without stirring while I get our coagulant ready. As usual, I'm mixing food-grade gypsum, aka calcium sulfate, with room temperature water. One and a half teaspoons of powder to half a cup of water, which is actually more than we need for a batch of milk this size, but I figure it's better to have more coagulant on hand than too little. Speaking of the milk, let's see how much starch we got. so much as I expected. Perhaps if I had more time and patience to cook this slowly and carefully so the starch clumps can be removed without burning the bottom of the pot, but I don't have more time nor patience and this did burn some. It's time to get this up to a simmer to cook the bean milk through completely. When bean milk is raw, it doesn't smell all that appetizing, but as it cooks, it starts to smell delicious. To be on the safe side, since raw beans are not good to consume by humans, I let it simmer for about 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes, and you can see the level of the milk has reduced. Um, do a little taste test of the milk itself. It is a thick beany soup, and um, it's actually pretty good, but we're going to try to turn it into tofu. Then I turn the heat up again for prime coagulation temperature. As with other experiments, we'll use 180 degrees Fahrenheit as our target because that's what we use for soy tofu normally. This time, I'll stir as it heats to prevent burning. And at about 180 degrees Fahrenheit, stir in the coagulant. This gets left alone with the heat off cover on for, well, I was planning to leave it for just 15 minutes, but it's been a long time actually. <laughs> Distracted. What do we have here? 120 degrees. <gasps> Something bouncy. It could just be the starch giving us I don't know. Let, let me hop around a little bit. Do we have milkiness? All right. Do we have curd? Seems like it. Okay. Let's, let's do it. Once again, using my favorite tofu press. Link in the description if you want to check it out. With the cloth that it came with, but first I dampen it. The moisture just makes the cloth easier to handle and stay where I want it to be as I pour in this whole pot of curds and whey. Lucky it all fit. Fold over the cloth to keep the curds in. Pop on that pressing top and the lid and twist the knob on the top to add more pressure. I'll pour off the whey, and as is tradition, the whey taste test. I always hesitate because it doesn't seem like it should be very nice. Yeah, you can definitely use that as vegetable broth. It has a light savory flavor to it. I'm not getting bean from this. I'm just getting nondescript vegetable broth. <laughs> The press can go into the fridge to chill completely. And look, 
like our other beans have plumped up. First, America's most consumed bean per capita, the pinto. We're following the same process as before. This time, the bean puree smells distinctly similar to soybean puree. I'm taking this as a good sign. And it's easy to squeeze too. I'll let it settle, but I'm gonna need this bowl so I'll transfer this to a pitcher. Now for my favorite bean, the kidney bean. Same process. Oh no, I'm getting black bean flashbacks. It's not quite as slimy, but it is kind of slimy and it is much more difficult to get the milk through than with the pinto beans. The pulp is still pretty wet, but I'm giving up. This is this has been a like half an hour of work, and it's been a nightmare, and my hands are finally done for. So I let these milks settle for about an hour, and when I came back, the starch really didn't become a distinct layer. I must have gotten lucky with the previous red lentil and fava bean starch removal because most of the starch is definitely still in this pinto bean milk. Learning from our broad fava bean experience, I'll cook this on medium low for a while, about five to 10 minutes. We do see the starch gel up, but like before, it's not nearly as much starch as I was expecting based on the nutrition values. And now, like me, you might have serious doubts. Will this entire video be fail after fail after fail? But would you be seeing this right now if every single bean was a fail? You'll find out, but first, I've got to give it the old college try. The full process, cooking the milk, getting it up to temperature, with our coagulant, a cover, and a weight, Next up, the same thing with our kidney bean milk. Come on, I want this to work so bad because I love kidney beans. They just taste the best, in my opinion. Again, I'm not seeing a settled starch layer, so I'm doing the same low cook to separate the starch as much as I can. So let the strain, oh, it's very gooey. I don't think this is gonna work, guys. But we're gonna try anyways. Um... Oh, gonna work faster. I think I'm making Burmese tofu. Shoot. Work faster, work faster. This is definitely not working. I feel like I should call it. I don't think this is working at all. It's not gonna work. 100% is not gonna work. So we can make shan tofu. No, Burmese tofu, but that style, the polenta-like tofu, but not the low-carb, high-protein tofu that's bouncy like regular soy tofu is, but we're going to try anyways. leave it alone for 15-20 minutes and then come back. I do believe pinto bean curds 
probably cool enough to transfer. I don't know guys. I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this, and um, I think we're gonna make a disaster. What fits? Well, miracles never cease. We have made some extremely smooth, extremely fancy kidney bean soup. These can both go in the fridge. How do you think they'll turn out? You don't have to wonder about the broad fava bean tofu because it's ready now. Just to remind you what regular fava bean tofu looks like. It's bouncy and almost the same as regular soy tofu. It tastes similar, it feels similar, you can cook it the same way, you can marinate the same way. This broad fava bean tofu, well, as you can see, it's not quite. In fact, it's kind of mush. However, when I cut it, it is delicate, but it's holding together. And I'm hungry, so let's cook some up. I'll make a simple coating of nutritional yeast, salt, garlic powder, onion powder, and a little white pepper, plus smoky ancho chili powder. And coat all sides carefully. Into my glass air fryer basket, Some uncoated because I want to see what it's going to be like. And I'll brush oil on one row of coated tofu and on one row of the uncoated tofu. An oil spray would be easier, but I just couldn't find mine today. Plus a bit of salt on these at the end, just because I think it's going to make a more fair comparison to the coated versions. I'll put them into the air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. They smell wonderful. They look, well, you can see how it looks. Bit of a mixed bag if you ask me. Some of it looks golden wonderful, some of it looks like unmentionable things. The important part is the taste though. So let's cut into this. Creamy, tastes like a bean. <laughs> It reminds me of no oil potato fries, like oven fries, where on Instagram it looks crispy, but when you make them in real life, you know it's like a soft skin on the outside. It's not ever crispy crispy. It may have crispy edges, but that's about it. But with the salt, it really enhances the bean flavor. It's delicious, actually. <laughs> this one is made with oil. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's like crispier. Inside's the same. The oil does enhance that crispiness on the outside. I wouldn't say it's super crispy, but it has a little bit of it. This is what I'm looking forward to. So this is without oil, with the seasoning. Same on the inside as the others. Mmm. Delish. And finally, with oil, with seasoning. You can already guess. I'm surprised. This one is not much better than this one. So overall, tasty. I haven't had the whole cooked fava beans before, so I can't compare, but they just taste like creamy beans on the inside. Very smooth compared to a regular bean, obviously, fiber removed. Was it worth the effort? I don't think so, but you can't have too much tofu at your exotic tofu tasting party. Meanwhile, these will go great on a salad. 
as the regular whole beans, but if you're feeling fancy or for some reason you can't have that much fiber, hey, go for it. They are definitely still starchy though, and I did feel the effects afterwards since I am so sensitive to carbs. But let's not dwell on tendonitis flare ups and perhaps move on to the pinto and kidney bean results. It's the next morning, and I have the pinto tofu and the kidney tofu. I didn't twist the tops yet, and I see there's some whey, so we will have a whey taste test. I'm just gonna. As far as it will go. Same with this guy. They're leaking all over the place today. All right then. I don't know if you can tell, but this is like viscous and kind of weird. This is more <laughs> watery. All right then. Pinto bean whey. Cheers. It tastes just like soy bean whey, which is to say, a nice addition in your next vegetable soup. This one, I really don't want to. It's like so, I don't think you can tell on camera, but it just looks so slimy and gross. Anyways, cheers. Well, it is slimy, but it's not gross. It tastes, it's different than this one. It's not, as savory. It's more, it's almost got an herbal quality to it. Which herb you ask? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> I'm gonna put, just because it has more pressure now, I'm gonna put these back in the fridge for, I don't know, an hour or two and see how, how much it compresses. And then we're gonna come back and reveal So let's do this first. Oh, it is soft. I might have just smushed that. Oh no, it is really soft. Okay. I don't think this is gonna work, my friends, but we're gonna try our best anyways. Oh, it's just super creamy. Yeah, it's like it, you could force it to be solid. <laughs> you could make this into like little soft cheese ball type things. The, um, the flavor is still just as, I know this looks gross, but yeah, the flavor is good. It's just beans, right? It's just like a bean, very, very plain bean dip. As tofu in your everyday kitchen, I think not. But as something interesting to work with, like just a, a very interesting ingredient texture, very, very smooth, velvety, it's pretty cool. So gross guys, like look at this, look at this. It's So this one is even more, I think, um, heavy with the starch. I do not have good feelings about this. Oh no. I'm trying to unwrap this, but it's sticking to the cloth. Maybe if I pressed it for a longer amount of time, but no, see this, it's solid because of the cooked starch. It's. You can feel, this is a cooked starch feeling, not like a tofu feeling. I don't know if you know. If you know the difference, if you've had Burmese tofu versus regular tofu. I mean, it's made from kidney beans, so it can't taste bad. <laughs> so did you expect these results? I'm curious about your thoughts. Leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching my friends and also for all your great comments and suggestions over the course of this series. With all these bean results pointing in the same direction, perhaps we shall try peas next time or store-bought milks. Please let me know your preferences in the comments below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you please and bye for now.